Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into a hot topic that's been making waves in the fitness community. Can your body really absorb and utilize 100 grams of protein in a single meal? Is there an upper limit at all? Let's break down the science and debunk some common myths. For years we've heard that the body can only absorb about 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal with the rest supposedly going to waste. There were some studies or publications in the past about how your body can only absorb 25 or 30 grams of protein in one sitting. Those studies were made and financed from some supplement companies to make it look that they've made a perfect protein powder which has exactly the amount of protein per serving that your body can absorb in this way promoting their protein powders. But is that really the case? Recent studies suggest otherwise. A 2023 study published in Cell Reports Medicine investigated the effects of consuming 25 grams versus 100 grams of milk protein after a full body resistance workout. The findings were surprising. The group that consumed 100 grams showed a greater anabolic response over a 12-hour period compared to the 25-gram group. Before we get into how much protein you should eat in one meal, it's important to understand the difference between absorption and utilization, two terms that are often confused but mean very different things. Absorption refers to how much of the protein you eat is broken down and taken up by your digestive system, specifically your small intestine into the bloodstream as amino acids. Here's the key point. Your body is incredibly efficient at this. It can absorb almost all the protein you consume, whether it's 20 grams, 50 or 100 grams, unless you have a specific digestive issue. So the idea that excess protein just gets wasted or flushed out is largely a myth. Now, utilization is where things get more nuanced. This is about what your body actually does with those amino acids once they are absorbed. One of the most important uses is muscle protein synthesis, the process of repairing and building muscle tissue, especially after resistance training. But here's the catch. Not all the absorbed amino acids are used for muscle building. Your body also uses protein to maintain organs, produce uh, enzymes and hormones, support immune function, and even generate energy if needed. Let me give you an example. Let's say you eat a steak containing 60 grams of protein. Your body will absorb virtually all of that protein, but depending on your needs, like whether you've trained recently, your muscle mass, and overall diet, only a portion of those amino acids may be directed toward muscle protein synthesis. The rest would be used for other physiological functions. Another example, whey protein is rapidly digested and spikes amino acid levels into the blood quickly, which makes it highly effective for stimulating muscle protein synthesis, especially right after workout. On the other hand, casein digests more slowly, providing a steady stream of amino acids over several hours. Both are absorbed well, but they are utilized differently depending on timing and context. So, when you hear people say you can only absorb 30 grams of protein per meal, what they usually mean, incorrectly, is that muscle protein synthesis plateau after that point. But as we will see later, that's an oversimplification based on outdated research. Several factors can influence how effectively your body utilizes protein. First, amino acid composition. The quality of protein determined by its amino acid profile affects its utilization. Proteins rich in essential amino acids, especially leucine, are more eff effective in stimulating muscle protein synthesis. Then we have digestibility. How easily a protein is broken down and absorbed impacts its effectiveness. Animal proteins generally have higher digestibility compared to some plain proteins. Number three, meal composition. Consuming protein with other macronutrients can affect digestion and absorption rates. For example, if you add fats to your meal, it will slow down the digestion. Then we have energy intake. Adequate caloric intake is essential. 
and without sufficient energy, the body may use protein for energy rather than muscle building. Number five, exercise. Engaging in resistance training increases your body's demand for amino acids, enhancing the utilization of dietary protein for muscle repair and growth. And last but not least, age and muscle mass. Older adults and individuals with more muscle mass may require higher protein intakes to achieve optimum muscle protein synthesis. And speaking of age, if you haven't already, check out my video about building muscle over 40. I will post a link up here somewhere or in the description of this video. So what does this mean for your meal plan? Total daily intake matters most. Aim for a daily protein intake of 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, depending on your activity level and goals. So if you're an 80 kilograms male trying to build muscle, about 160 grams of protein daily should be a good start. Then of course we have meal distribution. While it's okay to consume larger amounts of protein in one meal, distributing your protein intake evenly across meals can be beneficial for continuous muscle protein synthesis stimulation. If we go back to the previous example, four meals with 40 grams of protein equals 160 grams and it would be an option. Then post-workout nutrition. Consuming protein after resistance training can enhance muscle recovery and growth. The amount can vary, but higher intakes post-exercise have shown positive effects. Of course, we have protein quality. Focus on high-quality protein sources rich in essential amino acids. And combining different protein sources can help achieve a complete amino acid profile. Remember, individual needs can vary, so it's essential to find what works best for your body. In summary, the idea that your body can only utilize 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal is outdated. Emerging research indicates that higher protein intakes per meal, even up to 100 grams, can be effectively used by the body, especially in the context of resistance training. And by the way, if you need help in structuring the right meal plan for you, check out my free nutrition guide. The ebook is free and it will help you structure the right meal plan for you. The link is in the description of this video. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more science-backed fitness content, workouts, fitness tips, and drop your questions in the comments below. Until next time, stay strong, eat healthy, and stay active. Don't be a couch potato.